A general rule that applies to nuggets and their mechanical failures is that the more you search, the more you'll find. And that is doubly true for nuggets designed and constructed in the land of the baguette. If you want to know what I'm talking about, join me on this adventure and see what we find. This is my Twingo, named the Blue, and the current objective is to get it to pass tech inspection. To make it seem like I'm sort of organized, I decided to put together a list of all the things that need to be checked and possibly fixed. Going in order, the suspension has already been checked and the lower ball joints replaced, so that is an instant tick. Next up would be the lights. Some progress has also been done in this department. Firstly, the headlights have gotten their oxidized layers sanded off and have gotten clear coat sprayed on them by a local paint shop, so they look nice and shiny again. And also the corroded wiring for the fog lights has been fixed. They actually shouldn't be on this car, like I found out in one of the previous videos, but were wired in in less than a professional way. Like I said before, it is easier to just make them work instead of sourcing a bumper with no fog light holes, so forgive me, but this connector is going to have to stay like this for a little longer. A quick check if all of the lights worked revealed that everything is working as it should. Except for the rear license plate light, which is a common thing to fail. Hopefully it's just a, a bulb, but it usually is not, that's usually not the case. Ah, yes. This is what in the business they call a fuckery. My guess is that it's something similar to what happened to the fog light wires and the fix was a bit more destructive which is why it got gooped up to prevent water from coming in. Despite that, the contacts that hold the bulb were corroded and the bulb was blown. Splendid. Wait, no, hey, it's broken. That's good. I replaced it and cleaned the contacts and because that did the job, I decided to leave it as is to save some time. This will be revisited as soon as the bulb goes out or it starts bothering me again. It is important to make sure that the headlight beams are set to the right height. So with the highest setting, I checked their height with this special contraption. The passenger side main beam, even though it worked, had a bulb with a burnt spot on the inside, making its beam go all over the place, which is why it needed to be replaced with a fresh one. All the lights, including the fog lights, were then adjusted, and while doing that, I also discovered a nugget style surprise, which wasn't there before. If we turn this on to stage one, or the position lights, we can turn the high beams, but we can just flash. And usually when you put it into your main headlights, it should stay. Now it doesn't stay, nor does it, um, and uh, if I give it ignition, nothing, zero. Nada. I would have tried solving the problem by dismantling the switch and having a look inside, but the housing is riveted together and also a replacement switch is quite cheap and therefore the easiest solution. Which is why I went with that. With the lights all working and adjusted, I could almost take this off the list. Well, almost. There is still one small issue preventing me from it. And that is this third brake light, which technically works, but its plastic is broken, which is considered a fail. The problem with this is that nobody is making aftermarket replacements, which means you can only get it straight from Renault. Okay, what about the used one then? That would be an option, but this version of the brake light is only present on Twingo's years 2004 and later, which are quite rare. The older version, like on the green, doesn't have the rear window washer. There is an option to modify my trunk to fit the older version, but because thinking it would be faster and easier, I ordered it from Renault. It has now been 6 months since then, so if it doesn't show up soon, I'm gonna have to go with plan B. Moving on to the wipers and washers, this should at least be pretty simple. Well, that's very Apparently, the word simple isn't in this car's vocabulary, as upon testing, I've discovered that the front washer nozzle sprays the fluid out with barely enough pressure and the rear wiper isn't working. Sweet. I tried blowing out any possible soot from the nozzle with compressed air and also tried cleaning it with a piece of wire. But as that made almost no difference, I suspect it might be the pump. Now for the rear wiper. I checked the fuses and they were all fine. 
It was also getting power, so I was thinking maybe the switch isn't working. If I only had another one lying around to test this theory... Oh wait, I do. <laughs> Stealing parts from the green. <laughs> but that one also didn't work, so it was probably not the switch. Meaning it's probably something mechanical on the inside, which means I need to take it out of the car and disassemble it. But unfortunately, the wiper said no. Oof, it's on there all right. Oh my fingers. Before I broke something important, I decided that this is just going to have to be an omelet and I'm just gonna have to break some eggs. You son of a bitch. Finally getting it off the car and disassembling it, I still couldn't see anything wrong. But then my dad suggested the shaft probably seized up to the housing, which was exactly what happened. And the only thing that could knock it loose was a rubber tipped persuadinator. Afterwards we cleaned up the shaft and greased it up, I also filled the space where there used to be a seal between the housing and the shaft with additional grease to hopefully somewhat seal it and give it the best chance to last as long as possible. Please don't break on me, that would suck. Blend it. That now means that we already have two things unchecked, which isn't really making me feel good about this list idea. Anyway, moving on to the brakes. The front disc brakes seem to have been quite recently replaced, so we don't need to do much here. The back ones are drums however, and the left one is a bit tight, so they could use a little cleaning and a readjustment. Let me in! There we go. Gotta love steelies, they never weld onto the hub. Though they might look pretty horrible, there is a Disney movie lesson which applies perfectly to drums, which is that it's the inside that counts. I demand entry. <coughs> oh dear. That's a brand new bearing. Sick, nice. Here we go. <laughs> Nobody messes with Bitka. Drum brakes can be a little intimidating to work on, especially if they are like these where you have to loosen them with a tiny screwdriver through one of the bolt holes, which is quite tricky. But eventually, after enough battles with enough experience, you can get pretty fast at this. Ah, okay, he's loose. There we go. Coming off. Okay. There's a lot of cocoa in here. Brembo. I cleaned out all the brake dust, but then I noticed a little problem. This little guy started leaking. Which means I need to replace it. The other side wasn't leaking, but it also seemed pretty old, which is why I decided to replace both while I'm at it. When the new unpaid intern cylinders arrived, it was time to once again disassemble the drums. Alright, good. Both of these loosened. This is usually my least favorite guy on the whole car. As you get him more and more loose, he starts oozing more and more. And the thing that's oozing here is a brake fluid. The worst car related fluid by far. It has certain properties that make it a real pain to work with. For example, it has very low viscosity, so it drips really fast and it gets everywhere. It is also a lubricant which severely lowers your grip on anything you're holding. And it also irritates your skin, so this is probably the last time you'll see me being a brave boy not wearing gloves. Oh, and it also strips paint. 
Luckily it also has a pretty big weakness which is water, meaning it washes away pretty easily so at least there's that. If he doesn't want to cooperate you just have to use the persuadinator. There we go. Crustiness. With both brake cylinders replaced and the drums adjusted, I also wanted to check the brake fluid reservoir. You know what they say, brake fluid's like piss, if it's dark you're probably gonna have a problem. This one wasn't just dark, it was also red, which is unusual because it's generally colorless or a little yellowish, but apparently there are some special ones that are red. In any case, I am replacing it with some fresh fluid, and as luck would have it, I also had Jeff around to help me purge the old fluid out of the lines. And the reason I had Jeff around was because now with having checked everything on the blue and verifying it's safe to drive, we could technically put some temporary plates on it and go for a drive to see if anything else appears that needs attention. Or at least that was the excuse I came up with. We actually wanted to meet a fellow Twang enthusiast who we got to know through the comment section and have a little Nogetopolis get together. From afar the blue looks super clean. Uh -huh. You come closer a couple of steps you're like, oh. So it's five foot. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> ten foot at least, yeah. Uh, monster truck monster spec truck, tires, yeah. yeah. The, the OEM, the OEM 16 valve, oh, and the, the classic, <laughs> the classic rust location. Oh, can we see the, 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 the big sock? The big cock, I mean sock, yes. <laughs> Whoa. Look how much space you have here if you don't have AC. <laughs> All of this space for tra is a trade-off for a little bit of comfort. A little bit of comfort, which can totally be ignored. Yeah, you don't I, can, I, I don't understand the people that say you can't yeah. stand no AC. Yeah, th there are two people there who, are, who refuse to have no AC in the Twingos. This little trip revealed no other issues, which is lovely news and it means that we're getting really close to getting this blue boy on the road permanently. So stay tuned to see how that goes. They do be looking astonishing. Oh, <laughs> well said. <laughs> I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like to support the channel, you can get yourself a sticker if you want or like, subscribe, you know, the usual, everything helps. Thanks again and I wish you a great rest of your day.